Who's Dawn? Hey, Dawn. Who that mad for you, bro? I had this idea, bro. I'm gonna walk to the flats that I grew up in when I was a kid. It's a, it's a, it's a good full chapter of my book, which isn't on sale anymore. I'll give you that yarn in another video. I know he's all dying. Everyone messaging me for that book, bro. Which brings me to another point. I was there thinking, you know what? All of those mad parts of the book, if it's doable, we can go back in vlogs, bro. Because that book's not on sale anymore, and everybody's dying to read the book. Imagine just every now and then the vlogs are just vlog like mad parts of the book. I go back there in a vlog, like when I done the school siege. <laughs> First time I ever got locked up, you know what I mean? I'll go to the school and say this is where this is, you know what I mean? If the book company don't want to sell the book anymore because they're too woke, don't worry bro. We'll let the book be on my YouTube channel, what about that? But anyway, that was a secondary thought to, I want to walk through here. I'll tell you the yarn bro. Look how many people here in a day. We come here at night, remember? Like early primary school lads, you know? I grew up in um, Maryville area. Went to primary school out there. My mum was always on the list for housing, you know? Because we didn't have much money. So paying rent back then, whatever, it was like too much, you know? So we didn't live that well. And to get on the list for public housing in Australia, I don't know about nowadays, but even back then, my mum always tells me about how she was on the list. She was on the public housing list for 11 years before she even got offered the first place. And the first place was these bad flats in Waterloo, uh, Dobell. My mum didn't want a bar of it. She'd done an inspection there. After 11 years, they offered her these flats, Dobell, Waterloo. She went there, she said, like, <laughs> No, I'll wait another 11 years. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, but you only get to refuse like, hey, Dawn, you, uh, you only get like to refuse like two places and then that's it, you're off the list. You don't get to be real picky, which is understandable. You know what I mean? You can't, beggars can't be choosers, but my mum wasn't having a bar of it. What's matey doing there? He's throwing some things in the air, making cracking noises like whips, look. Thing. He's like practicing like a busking performance or something. We walk past there. This is where the fireworks went off. But this is Darling Harbour in the day. Anyway, back to the yarn. So she got offered by uh, this place. This is uh, was a company called City West Housing. They're called City West Housing. It's just housing on the west side of the city, inner city housing, whatever it is. We had no idea. I had no idea about the inner city. Maryville's not far from here. If you're from Sydney, you know. Maryville's only 15 minutes away, but that was my whole life. I didn't even know people could live in the inner city. Do you know what I mean? And this place that we're walking to, this suburb that we're coming to now, it's called Ultimo. It's at, it's at Glebe, Broadway Shopping Centre. Around there, I had no concept of Glebe or the suburb of Redfern or Waterloo or Woolamal. No idea what I was getting into. It was a very life-changing moment getting, moving into this, um, block in uh, Ultima but yeah we're excited you know I remember I remember bro my mum just coming home one day or I got home from school can't remember that detailed we're gonna walk away that was like the way I used to ride my scooter in reverse down Darling Harbour you cut through this car park we'll see if it's still a thing I just remember I was saying we got a new place we got a housing place and we're all so happy because it was like affordable rent and we'd have money to go like buy mad stuff and that whatever but she goes it's in the city i'm like what does that mean what do you mean like the buildings like center point tower <laughs> so anyway we moved here no idea about it and yeah we'll go suss it out there's a thing in sydney city west housing there's like a few different companies of housing one is new south wales something department of housing one is st george department of housing one city west Department of Housing, blah, blah, whatever. All these little departments. And this is the first block of this uh, City West Department of Housing. This was in the late 90s. So even what we just walked through here, nothing like that. Nothing like that. None of this. That whole building over there didn't exist. None of these buildings didn't exist. That was completely different, but this car park did. 
even this wasn't a thing. I, this was very different. The, there were train lines here, but they weren't a light rail system. That, like, that wasn't a thing. And there was a monorail. So the monorail would come straight through down here. There was, the monorail would run down there, go up there. I don't know if he's ever seen what a monorail is, but yeah, the monorail stations used to be here. There used to be a monorail station right here. It was called Harborside, and there's a monorail station up there called um, Piedmont Bridge. It's long gone, bro. That's like, honestly, how long has it been gone for? 20 years. Nah, there's nothing left of it. I'm trying to, trying to figure out if there's any, any, any like remnants, you know what I mean? But yeah, it was just this thing in the air. It was this thing in the air, maybe like one, two, as high as the third level there. It was about that high. And it just went across like that. But yeah, this is where, this is where I cut through. I'll suss out if it's this one. I don't know, I just stopped because they stopped here. Over here on this side, there's a walkway on the same level. Oh, but the walkway is gone too. All right, so that's something different. There used to be a walkway, like a like a bridge over, and it used to go down over there, but that's gone. I feel like it was here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's here. It's this level. Oh. All right, so, so where I pointed over there was a bridge. There was a bridge there, a footbridge that went over the, the train tracks, and the footbridge had a monorail station. So there was a monorail station or a footbridge. So the monorail station went first, but the footbridge was there for years after, but that must have got knocked down. It probably ruined the aesthetics of the beautiful new things over there. So it's just here, it's just up this street. Just up there. Harris Street Ultimo. So I'll tell you why, like I went through there, why it's so significant, you'll know in a second when we get up to my old street. This is all exactly the same. Exactly. Yeah, this building, it's all exactly the same. So I moved from Marienville to here in the late 90s. It would have been like 98, 90, 98, 97. Wish I remembered exactly. Because I was going to school at Canterbury and then I changed to high school, I was catching, so, because everyone I grew up with was in Canterbury, right? Canterbury Primary School, Dully Chill Primary School. Well, the schools I went to were Canterbury and Dully Chill. So I was going to, every day, I wanted to go to Canterbury High School. <laughs> so every day, even though I'm here living in Ultimo, I would go walk up the Central Station, 20 minutes, and then catch a bus all the way to Canterbury, 428, and then all the way home. And I said, my mum was saying, you can't do that. Like, how long are you going to put up with that for? And I was saying, like, oh, it's sweet. <laughs> and then I ended up getting kicked out of Canterbury anyway. Some stupid stuff with a chair or something. I don't remember. Something dumb. And then I went to Glebe High after that. I went to Glebe High, which is just one street here. Behind, behind the flat. Oh, if you go the next left, it's on that street. Next, actually, next to my apartments. So this was the street I grew up on. Harris Street. Harris Street Ultimo. And down here is the first housing block that they've put in, in this suburb. Now they're everywhere. Now City West housing is a big thing in Sydney. Only in, in the city area. But yeah, it's a, it's a massive thing. Like there's hundreds of, you know, like tens of thousands of people live in City West. I'll tell you a funny yarn. <laughs> I guess it's very generic, so I can say it. When I tell the yarns, bro, like the stuff in my book and stuff like that, you got to understand, like I'm telling yarns for things I got arrested for. And then I'm very vague about other things. I remember I used to be, this is when I was young, like 15, 16, heroin addict. I used to be like bad on ill pays too, like Rivies and um, there was no Zannies back then. I was like Rivies and, and Serapax Cera and, and Valiums and that. And I used to just get lazy, bro, like, bro, I don't care, you know what I mean? So when they, all they see under here, they weren't shops. My, my block is the next block up. So all under here, they didn't used to be shops. They were just like nothing. And they made them into all shops. <laughs> I used to pump them. <laughs> I used to pump them, lad. Put cash register, laptops, this, that. And I used to climb my balcony. Come on, how are you? I used to pump them. Cash registers, laptops, whatever's in. I don't even care, bro. And I'll show you, these are my flats here. 
So this is this is the flats I grew up, I, I moved in. This was my introduction, the change of my life, my introduction into the city. Why is there King's Cross coppers here? Yep. You can see out of everywhere we've walked, you can see that this is a housing block. Look at the letterboxes. This was my number eight. That's the same buzzers, I think. These and these were they tried to put them glass. They got smashed three times. They went metal ever since. Yeah, bro. You know, I want to go in and explore. Like I'm not just showing news. I haven't been. I'm, I've walked through here. That's a lie. Once since since thing. But see see here. See that 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 first floor. That window. That window. That window. And that balcony. That was my house. That was actually my bedroom window. That one. So that's where like, that was my bedroom when I like introduced to the streets of crime, started going to boys' homes, got on drugs, in and out of juvie, in and out of jail. For years and years, that was my bedroom window. But how I'd get up is I'd climb, I'd climb here, bruh. Where, see where they were just like filming me and they ducked down? That's how I used to climb on that, on those bars. So I used to jump, jump up here. Like if I was ever getting chased by coppers or something, or even just to get home, like if I didn't have my keys, I would jump onto this ledge, put one foot on those bars, and then jump up and grab that and pull myself up. <laughs> I used to pump these shops or anything cars. That is, it doesn't matter, bro. Like the back of the casino. <laughs> I got mad, Johns, bro. Because the casino's here, Sydney Casino. It's, it's on that street there. So I could do stuff at the casino. Now, people would be getting robbed at the casino. And I just run one street, bro. <laughs> You know what I mean? But anyway, that's where I grew up, bro. But we've got to try to get in, lad, so I can, like, look at the old goodnesses, lad. Adlai, what are you doing? Yeah, sweet. Because I want to go in and show them my old flats, lad. Well, come through yours. Oh, I'm mad, yeah. I'll go through his house, but I don't even know what he's like there. Yeah, bro. He just let me through his house, lad. Um, bro, see, this is the flats here. That was mad, mad by in, bro. Just ask the, the locals, bro. Is a curry fella. Like, yeah, come through, bro. You're right. Go through, lad. <laughs> so that that door there, that was my door. That's the door I just come through. I was gonna record in his house, poor fella. That was my my front door. And this back in the days, like you know, I'm scared of heights. This building's ten stories high. This was a spin out, bro. So you can imagine being like a poor kid in Marrickville, living in a bodgy little house in the suburbs, and all of a sudden you get a housing commission house in the inner city like how quick did we walk here from darling harbour like two streets if if i wasn't commentating and i used to ride you remember razor scooters back then that was a thing so i'll jump on my razor scooter here one minute and i'm in the middle of darling harbour three minutes i'm in george street anzac bridge the casino everything so bro like i spun out like I was spinning out on the world, you know what I mean? It's like, where do I live? It's crazy. You know how where I live now, up in the building, and it's like, bro, it's hectic. It was like that, but when I was a kid, you know. You know what? I just clicked on the lad's house that I walked through. I think I know him, lad. I just remembered. I think that's one of the older boys from Redfern, and something happened, and he got paralyzed or something. Because he was in a he was in a wheelchair. I just clicked on lad. I, I can't remember his name though. What? It goes oh one is there. How hey, weird is that bro? It goes once here. You think your brother's no one it starts out four. <laughs> this leaf lad. This was yeah, this was my door lad. That's like the kitchen, living room, laundry toilet bathroom and the bedrooms on the other side i'll tell you the funniest yarn too bro so when i moved here there was like i don't know bro, i asked my mom maybe like an 18 month period where i was still like an innocent kid ride the scooter i used to ride um because my best mate when i was young his name's laurie he used to live in um uh lilyfield the houses down there so you just go across the anzac bridge right it's two suburbs like you go from here through Glebe and you at Lilyfield. So I used to go there, innocent, nothing, bro, you know, smoke, own case, this and that, bro, nothing serious. When I started hitting the streets and found out about, like, Waterloo, Woolloomooloo, stuff like that, Redfern, that complete change. That's it. I was disappeared. I didn't live here no more. I used to 
float around, they used to live up the block and up Redfern and stuff like that, right? So I would only be living at home again with my mum and my family. So my mum, my younger brother and uh, my stepdad, we all lived here. I would get out of juvie, like boys' homes or, or jail or whatever, mostly boys' homes back in these years. I'll get out of Cobham, I'll get out of Baxter after like six months or four months or whatever. I'll come home because my conditions are to live at home. I'll be here for like three days, you know what I mean? And then psh, gone, psh, back on the heroin, psh, or go and doing something, doing breaks, stealing lappies, ram rates, whatever, and then go back to jail. So like, I didn't have much time with my family or time living here at all as soon as I got into crime or got into the into the hoods around the inner city all the places where I'd done the first hood walk you know Surrey Hills Waterloo Redfern which is just the top of this street so Glebe if you hear it when I, I, I filmed Ilche one street that way Waterloo Redfern like one street up the top there you know what I mean so after years of doing this I think I was in jail now I think I was about 20 or 21 years old and I'm in Park Leaf or whatever I don't remember like I do not remember like genuinely don't remember I, I got locked up for a, probably somewhere between 23 to 26 different individual times for a total of 13 years inside I was barely ever out the longest single time I was inside was six years um, that was the last time but 13 years all up so I do not remember don't even ask me but what I do remember is because I wouldn't even make phone calls, bro. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, when you when you live in that life, it's just you, bro. I used to go to jail. I used to get sent to the other side of the state. No friends. No one to call. Didn't call family. No girlfriend to send me money. Nah, brother. Just living on bread and tuna on the other side of, you know what I mean? But I'll get out. And I just always had the presumption that my family would live here. You know what I mean? Get parole, get out. and Get parole, get out. Whatever, you know? But this one time I just got released. I don't know if I got bail or if I just beat the charge. And I came here, bruh. So I've got my, my jail stuff. All I remember is I got out for Park Lee. I think I beat the charges, right? I did beat the charges, actually. I beat some charges and I got out from Park Lee. I'm in my greens. <laughs> Had my thongs on, you know, your little your little pouch of jail photos. That's all you take with you because you leave everything for in there, you know what I mean? You don't bring out your good shoes or your electricals or something like like a full scumbag. Anyone that takes their stuff home, you know what I mean? So I've come here, I buzz, no one answered. Done my maneuver, but I walked because I had thongs on. Lucky I didn't climb the balcony, I would have been back in jail. I had thongs on, right? So boom, come in the way, like got away in, come in, come in, boom, boom, boom. I come up here, I'm knocking. No one answered, bro, I'm looking here. See, it's frosted, but I'm like doing little jump looks, you know what I mean? Like, and I can see a photo like that I didn't recognize, like an art or something, like, mom, like that. Some scared woman answers the door, Chinese woman. And she's going like that. I look in thing, boom, I see like a uh, like a 13 year old boy. I see like Chinese people and photos on the wall. I go, what are you doing in my house? Like that. She goes, this is my house. What are you doing? Go away. I said, oh, like I clicked on. It took me one second to click on. It's like, all right, I'm sorry. I used to live here. Apparently I don't live here anymore. See you later, don't worry about it. <laughs> and I had no idea where my family went. I don't know. So. I just, I was spewing, dumped the photos in like a little bush down here and just went back to Redfern. <laughs> That's it. Just went back to Redfern, jumped on the gear or whatever and went and pumped something, bought some clothes and back into it and end up like two weeks later finding out that something was going on in my mum's life and they, they, they were sick of living in housing. She must have got a good job. You know what happens in housing? Sometimes they live in it for too long and the grass is always greener on the other side. They get themselves a good job and they think, oh, I can pay private rent. I don't want to live in housing. It's annoying, blah, blah, blah. They give up their housing. They go move out somewhere, go back to paying private rent and they're spewing. And once you give up your housing, you're not getting housing again. So that's the situation that happened with my mum. So my mum's, this, this all happened in like 2006 or 2005 or something. So yeah, that was a funny little yarn, bruh. I used to think I was rich, lad, when I was young, living here. You go to the top floor, boom, you got like, city views, they're mad views. It's not like the place we live now. I know that on the 7th, the 7th is, and then the 8th and the 9th, you need to jiggle it or something. 
Yeah, it's the seventh. Yeah, so the seventh is where the, the balcony is. Yeah, I'm still scared. <laughs> yeah, so there's the eighth. And the ninth is that extra roof. But yeah, the seventh is here. These are new flats next door. But anyway, look at these views here that we had. Hectic, eh? Imagine getting this. Imagine being a little snotty nosed kid in Marigville and they say, yeah, yeah, you come here, live. And it was cheap, like, pff, I don't know, 100 bucks a week, 80 bucks a week, whatever it was back then. Look at that, lad. The star, that's the star there, those two white buildings, the new casino, or the old casino. That big skinny blue one there, that's the crown, that's the new casino. None of those buildings were there actually, it was just like that skyline. But from here, fireworks are mad, like you can see mad fireworks. And from this way, you can see the Anzac Bridge. Anzac Bridge there. So when, this is so you can get a concept, you know when you're coming over from the western suburbs over the Anzac Bridge, as soon as you come over the Anzac Bridge, this is on the left. So they're just coming over. It's all those flats here on the left. Yeah, but this building wasn't here. It used to just be a hole in the floor for ages. It's still high, like seven floors, nothing now, but... Brother, there's no difference. If you fall, you die. Doesn't matter if it's the fifth or the... You drop off the, the tower in Dubai. What's the difference? You know what I mean? The fifth or the 500th floor, what's the difference? So I used to just pop this top one. So you go, you don't need a, you don't need for the, all the levels. But for some reason, up here, it's always locked. I think just the people, oh, it's not locked at all. All right, see here, this lock, this used to be locked and the only the people on the eighth floor used to have access to this roof here. Like they were special. Um, yeah, here. This is a mad view. Look at this. This is the floor. You seen my rap song, The Six? I shot it on here. You know where I got the city behind me? That's That was right there at that corner. Oh, that's putrid. Full putrid drop. Ugh. Yuck. That makes me shiver. All right, let's go back down. That was always at the back there, these aerials, antennas. That exact one, see with the red lightning bolt on it? That exact one. I remember that when I was a kid. <laughs> we were just always looking at that lightning bolt. We've got the basement. It's gonna be hard for me to tell any stories about my upbringing without talking about, and this is how I've done this climb, and this is how I got away from the coppers, and this is the booby chop, because there was not really much else, bro, unfortunately. Unless you want me to take you to my preschool. You know, like what I used to do, it would be a bigger spin out. I used to come and I used to graffiti, like when I used to learn to tag and like, you know, tag walls and that. I just, imagine they didn't buff it. Even this, oh, we had this full smells down here now. Underground security parking. We thought we were the richest people, I swear. Yeah, and it's like under, you go to the basement in an elevator, but to get in, you gotta do a security tap and it's like it opens for you and like it closes behind you. <laughs> That's how we thought, lad. This was my mom's car spot here, this one here. This is the garbage room. I used to go in there and graffiti all the time because I ain't cameras now. I used to tag either when I was really young, flesh, because I love bone thugs, you know, flesh bone. Even though Crazy Bone's my favourite, I just thought Flesh was a mad tag. Flesh or, or it would have just been Spanian. I want to look on the ground floor. How do I find one tag though? I'm talking 20... <laughs> I'm dropping tags in somewhere between 28 and 22 years ago. I'm like, bro, it's still got to beat you, lad, surely. I swear that was mine. I swear, lad. The WB, that's how I used to write. I don't, you just can't see it. You just can't see it, lad. Bullo boys, I used to write like that. 
I swear that was mine, lad. It's a W, B. And you can see two, zero. I don't know if you can see that. It's a two and a zero. Zero, seven. Two, zero, zero, seven. Or one. No, no, two, zero, zero, one. I swear that was mine. Well, like boys, two, zero, zero, one. I know there'd be tags in there, lad. I want camera twice. One camera there and one camera here. Yeah, I'm not gonna break it. This is going on YouTube, lad. I'll get myself done. Anyway, that's the flats I grew up in, lad. Inside was, um, it was a three bedroom apartment. Three bedroom place. It was actually pretty big. And we moved in when the flats were brand new. So it was like a brand new three bedroom city apartment it was mad and all these ones are private they were private apartments i've never been in i'm just on the roofs <laughs> and the balconies even here on this side of us whole lane and here i look just at the top of the lane this is the off-ramp to the to anzac bridge a lot of years have probably come off on this off-ramp Mad spot, bruh. I had the swipe here too, uh, to this building. Uh, Cause like, heaps of like, uh, not really criminals, but like half unky jays and that, like lived in these flats here. Um, so it's easy to get the swipe cause they don't have cars. So I used to have one of the swipes and I used to, I wouldn't carry it on me, um, but I'd leave the swipe to access to this in one of the bushes here. So this, was like a security car park where you could park Oddie Hayes, you know what I mean? So he's coming bombing every morning by a little shit box like Mazda 626 or something. I'll wake up here, I'll wake up, walk up, swipe it, get my <laughs> get my Ford laser hottie, boom, drive up to Columbia's house. <laughs> what are you doing, lad? Let's ouch. <laughs> this car's on. That car is fully blacked out but turned on the car's on fully blacked out even a black stocking over the driver's window look this wasn't um blocked before it's blocked now don't ask me why it's become a little dumping ground or homeless people or something Right now we're, we're walking through Ultimo. It's a really inner city suburb, a really tiny suburb. A lot of you probably have never heard of this suburb that I'm in. Might as well just say like, if you can picture where Broadway is, Glebe Broadway shopping center, and then Central Station, which is just up the road. It's the tiny little suburb that sits in between those. And it's, it's one of Sydney's older suburbs. It's one of the original inner city village of Sydney suburbs before when Sydney was a tiny little so a tiny little um, city, a little town. So you can see all the buildings. They're all like heritage buildings. The whole inner city is like this. This is what separates like the inner Sydney from Sydney suburbs. Is that it's like that. And that's the type of houses that are in Ultimo, Glebe. Uh, if you walk through any of those places, it all looks like this. Woolloomooloo, uh, Redfern, half of Waterloo, most of Surrey Hills, most of Darlinghurst. It's all just like that. And some some parts. There he is. Oh yeah. Mr. Fabulous. <laughs> hey, Mr. Fabulous. That's what happens when you forget my name halfway through, so you just change it into a compliment. He wanted to say Mr. Spaniel. There he is, Mr. Mad Guy. <laughs> Nah, he's good. He's a smart. <laughs> I'm not teasing him. It's mad, but, but like giving me a positive shout out. But I'm just saying, like, it's just funny. I know what happened then. <laughs> Mister Fabulous. <laughs> yes, that's all like that, bro. Like, if you're to if you're talking about these houses, look at them. Look, you're talking about houses that are 
can't. Like, so you're old, old Sydney. <laughs> I looked at my watch. <laughs> I'm trying to calculate <laughs> how old that would be by having a thought of like when the Sydney village was built. Those houses are well over 100 years old. But I looked at my watch as the gesture of calculation. So I was like, these houses, they're like, <laughs> they're like three o'clock, lad. Their house, their actually, their housing commission. It's mixed in with housing commission here. The next street down, um, it's all just old school houses like that, but they're all housing commission. But you got to see these houses here, like see the one I pointed at, the ones we just walked through. In Sydney City, a good chunk of those are owned by the government and our housing commission, and they're very expensive houses. So those ones here are private. You can, you can see, you can just tell. Um, and those houses will be worth like at least three mil, three and a half mil, at least. And then there'll be a housing one next to it where the bloke's paying 90 bucks a week. <laughs> and the houses are exactly the same. These ones here are probably housing. These whole blocks are. And these are the streets that I grew up. So this path we're walking now, if you're, well, the bottom of that street is where the flats I grew up in are. This was the street, this street leads to, so like I said, Glebe's that way. This street leads to Redfern up here it's it's probably only another mate, eight minutes walk in a straight line 10 minutes walk at the most this was the street i walked anytime i wanted to go back to my mum's i'd be up there for weeks at a time i just walk back down the road to mum's <laughs> you know what i mean kick back for a night and disappear again oh you reckon window semi open looks like it's dumped hasn't been driven in ages you can tell by the collection on the wipers. Hammered condition. The partial window open, like... The ignition's not jiggled, though. Oh, they got a free Palestine sticker, so... It's been tampered with sometime in the last three months since that's become trendy. Ultima Community Centre. On here, if you've ever seen... There's a basketball, a lot of blow-ins, people that aren't even from Sydney or Sydney City especially. There's a cool basketball on the top here, see those nets? It's like a basketball court, it's like an infinity pool and it goes onto the city. I'll see if we can go up there, I'll see if... They're a bit exclusive with it. But anyway, you've probably seen it. It's, um, it's like a basketball court. And there's like net around it and it's just like the whole city's behind you. It's like a drop off the sides. That's on this roof. Look how hectic it is now. Far out, lad. It's developed so much. All of this here is new. I'll show you. That's the Powerhouse Museum. That was there. The Powerhouse Museum was there. But I'll tell you everything that's new. That skate building behind that, those big yellow flats. Nearly all of those buildings, that World Tower, the one next to it, the one there. See that Meriton? That Meriton was there. The, that big tall building with the red line down the middle, that was new. This whole aquatic centre here, this is all new. This is Ian Thorpe Aquatic Centre, all new. Like everything you used to see here was just empty, lad. All of this has happened to Sydney in like the last 15 years or something. Anyway, this is back to my street, Harris Street. Yeah. Also my tape up there. My flats were just down there on the left, like another however far we walked, 200 meters. That's it. That's where they're the flats I grew up. Well, they're the flats like I, when I moved to Sydney City and got introduced to this whole world. That were the flats I lived in. That's it, bro. Later.